Hi, this is Sean Savage with International Risk Resources, and welcome to another installment on our video series on self-insured retentions. In this video, we're going to cover the very basics of what is a self-insured retention. Now, our goal with this video series is to be very simple and brief. So let's just get started. So what is a self-insured retention? Well, first, it's an endorsement on your policy. It's often an endorsement that replaces the deductible endorsement. It contains language that tells you when to report a claim to the insurance company based on its size or the type of claim. It can also tell you when the insurance company wants to receive loss runs or loss history. And it'll include what information should be on those loss runs and perhaps even how it should be formatted. The insurance company will also occasionally like to receive claim analysis or claim updates on particular claim activity. So if there's a, an ongoing claim, uh, they may want updates periodically on what is going on with it. The endorsement can also contain accounting requirements for self-insured retention payments. So as the insured is making payments toward a claim, it'll specify what documentation is going to be required for the claim to be accepted by the carrier. Another thing the endorsement can include is third-party administrator requirements. If the carrier is requiring a third-party administrator, it'll be specified in that endorsement. But probably the biggest thing the self-insured retention endorsement includes is the fact that the insured must make payments up to the self-insured retention limits. Now these would be payments toward a claim. Now that sounds a little bit like a deductible, right? I mean the insured has to make payments toward a claim or a contribution toward a claim. But it's different from a deductible in a couple of key ways. And let's get into that now. When I first started in the business, a self-insured retention was described to me as like a big deductible. But it's not a big deductible. I mean, first, it doesn't have to be big. You can have self-insured retentions at $5,000. I'm sure some carriers will do them with less than that. And secondly, it's in a lot of ways, it works entirely opposite of a deductible. Let me explain. In a deductible, you report the claim to the carrier, and that can be done by the insured or the agent. Then the carrier handles the claim from beginning to end. And then at the end, when the claim is resolved, the insured makes his contribution to the claim in the form of a deductible, so it's paid at the end. Now, with a self-insured retention, it's almost exactly the opposite. You do not report the claim to the insurance company, you report it to a third-party administrator. The third-party administrator handles the claim along with the insured until it reaches the self-insured retention limit, the max. So it's their own self-insurance. The third-party administrator works the claim with the insured up to the max of their self-insurance, and then the claim is turned over to the insurance company. So you can see the difference. The deductible is handled at the end of the claim, and the claim was uh, entirely handled by the insurance company. In a self-insured retention, the insured is self-insuring, so they have control the whole way and it's handled at the beginning of the claim, before it gets to the insurance company. Now, once the self-insured retention limit has been met, let's say you have a $10,000 self-insured retention, and the insured has been making contributions to resolve the claim up to that point. When it reaches the $10,000, the claim is turned over to the insurance company, and they handle it from there. So I hope that helps to cover some of the basics of the self-insured retention endorsement and how it differs fundamentally from a deductible. We have other videos in this series that cover topics like what are the benefits of self-insured retention, uh, what is a third-party administrator, and several others. So please go check those out. I'll throw a link below. As always, thank you very much for watching. Please comment and subscribe, and let us know if you have any questions or any ideas for future videos. We really appreciate your support and input, and look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks.